Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, brothers and sisters and friends and everyone else, uh, welcome to our show, uh, this exclusive Ramadan show called Here for Youth um, by Islamic Network, the charity. Uh, apologies for slight delay, but uh, I hope you guys were, you know, uh, have shown a bit of patience, inshallah, these things happen. Uh, but I do. Before we start the show formally, I would like to interact with whoever's on. Uh, so if you're here, say give me some salams, and uh, along with your salams, tell me where you're from, which city. Uh, so salams, which city, and how's your Ramadan? How's your Ramadan going for? If you really want extra points, maybe tell me tell me about your iftari as well. Uh, so I'm your host, uh, Nadim Ashraf. I'm with Islamic Network, and this show is called Here for Youth Show. Um, I want to talk about really quickly. Why, why, or what is Islamic Network? Very briefly, because we are a very big charity, we're an old charity, mashallah. And also, I want to talk about our guest, our special guest we have for today, and also why we're doing the show. What's the point? What are the main uh, makasid, the main uh, purpose of the show, inshallah? So, I see, mashallah, Sister Umama uh, is here. Assalamu alaikum, Sister from Islamabad. Jazakallah khair. Sister Umama, can I ask you and others to share this live stream? Uh, because if you share this, uh, other people can benefit as well. So, brothers and sisters, um, really, really quickly, Islamic Network. Just in case you've never heard of us, you've uh, this is the first time you come across us, or you've been busy and you've not seen our work, you've not been in touch with us. Um, so, it's about young people, young people, the youth of our society, wherever you are, UK, around the world. Um, if you look at it, if you study it, if you observe. That it's actually what's what's shaping their identity is actually social media. It's either social media, gangs, it's given them purpose, pornography is corrupting them. Uh, they're they're trying to uh, you know the, the the drugs is providing them with the escape from their mental, physical, and spiritual turmoil, turmoil. So they have nowhere to turn to, they have no community to turn to, the youth, the youngsters, the young people of our community. So what we've done, Islamic Network, alhamdulillah, with experience, with a lot of thinking, a lot of research, with a lot of expertise. And a lot of people who have experienced these issues, a lot of youth that have now grown up and they changed, alhamdulillah, Allah guided them. A lot of these people, uh, they found like a formula, as you can say, a, a way of engaging the youth. They, they believe that through engagement, through effective youth engagement, can we really get uh, provide the youth with a safe space and we can also connect with them and inshallah, obviously, eventually connect them to Allah. And that will help them, you know, to uh, have a, have a strong identity, have access to really good role models, and you know, we can start building some really strong uh, character traits. So this is what we're doing now. What we're doing is something uh, called a hub. We're trying to create a hub, a community hub. And Subhanallah, what best place to have a community hub than the place, the building that Allah has provided for Ummah, and that is the masjid, the mosque. Subhanallah. So the mosques are there. They are masjids are there to provide hubs, but what we're trying to do is we, we want to do youth engagement via these hubs. And when I say engagement, things like games, gaming, this is what the youth love, uh, talking to them, create a safe space, having one-to-one -one discussions, small reminders, sports, the sisters do a big brunch where they absolutely love it, cooking amazing stuff. There's a lot of things we can do, but let's create that hub. If we can have that hub, we can start engaging with our youth and inshallah, we can take them away from all those issues that I mentioned. I just mentioned a few issues, but this is what we're doing to do. So, um, before I bring on our guest today, inshallah, just a quick intro. Dr. Dean, mashallah, he's very passionate about uh, youth issues. He's been working very hard. Those who are involved with community work and Dao work, they know the work he's done, mashallah, may Allah accept from him. So Dr. Dean, uh, brothers and sisters, is actually a PhD researcher in sociology and a lecturer by profession. Uh, he's, uh, he's the founder of Dr. Dean Youth Solutions, which is like a faith-based youth charity with over 12 years hands-on experience supporting Muslim children. Uh, he's considered a youth expert. Uh, he's a motivational speaker. He's a vlogger and a blogger and a great storyteller. He's also a life coach, mashallah. So I know he's uh, very passionate about the youth. He's always talking. He's doing a, doing a lot of research. And I'm going to ask our wonderful producers to bring him on right now by, by I would say, magic. Should we, use, should we say the word magic? But yes, uh, Dr. Deep. <laughs> How are you doing, Nadeem? You okay? Alhamdulillah, all the way live from Al Ain, Al -Ain uh, UAE. Yeah. Al Ain. Uh, not Al Ain. From, from, hotel room. <laughs> from hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> Mashallah. Welcome to the show, bro. This is our first show. We're starting off with you. 
So uh, high you. hopes from you. <laughs> I'll just speak to you. The house in Brooklyn. <laughs> it's really hot here. Really hot. Well, it's well, all right. No, the AC is working, right? Yeah, it's, it's too cold. It literally gets too cold. Okay, so yeah, Allah. That's so, another problem. Uh, <laughs> Bro, what I'm going to do is, before I ask my first question, and then we'll get some questions from the comments, and I'm going to reply to them as well. Um, I want to uh, say why we're doing this show in the first place. Like, what is the point of this show? Uh, is it just because we were bored and we're going to pass time Ramadan? Or is there a purpose behind it? So, look, there's various purposes. In these shows, we're going to have, inshallah, seven shows, around seven shows throughout Ramadan. You are our first guest. And what we want to do is touch a few issues. One of them is we want to, inshallah, maybe... Hear some positive stories of youth that have actually changed because we hear about the miseries, we hear about the problems, we hear about the issues, but I'm sure there's some success stories that engagement, effective engagement, actually works, subhanAllah. And that can act as an encouraging thing for the ummah. The other thing, bro, we're going to inshallah maybe touch upon is mosques as a hub, uh, how we can really uh, use this, uh, you know, this tool that Allah's provided. We have it in the UK, all over the UK, and all over the world. And why go to a community center or other places when there's a mosque, when there's a masjid, the house of Allah? And it can act as an ideal hub for the community, inshallah. And the other thing we want to, uh, the other aspect of this is because we're a charity, Islamic Network is a charity, it's a non profit organization. People are working on their backs for many years, just for the sake of Allah, inshallah. We need the help of the Ummah, and it's Ramadan. So we're going to, inshallah, ask for people to help us in fundraising as well, inshallah. So, uh, I'm just gonna check out some comments. We have mashallah uh, people like Javs, they're giving you and me salams, Javs and Hadi Anur, Salam alaikum Islamabad, Uzma Qureshi, uh, Yasser Shazad said, Dr. Saab, mashallah. So that's obviously you, so you get a mashallah, bro. Um, and uh, he, he Yasser likes a sticker behind me, yes. Um, yes, cool, play my kids, right? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, be before my first question, and again. What we want to do, we've got a target today, brothers and sisters. And you know, if you, brothers and sisters, including myself and Dr. Dean and others uh, who are behind the scenes, if you can help us reach this target, we can create these amazing hubs for the for the youth, inshallah. In turn, we get reward. It's Ramadan. This is the best time to give, subhanAllah. Right? So we need everyone to donate. And we need to, and if you can't donate for whatever reason, at least share this stream. So, brothers and sisters, if you look at your screen, if you look below this window, there's a button called the share button, right? Have a look at that right now. This is live action, call in action right now. I want you to use this finger that Allah has given you, this weapon of reward. Click, press that share button right now. In fact, I'm going to do it as well while I'm talking. And if Dr. Dean can do that as well, inshallah. So we all do this. Let's share this. Imagine you by you sharing, other people come on and they donate for the sake of Allah. People are looking to give sadaqah and people are looking to donate to help the youth. Then inshallah, you get a share in the reward, right? So our target, we have a target today. We have a target of 300 pounds in the next hour or so, inshallah, bi'ithnillah. And that's just 30 people to give 10 pound each. That's it. Just 10 pound each. And also, we've got an exciting offer. Check it out. Before I, before I say the exciting offer, has everyone shared this? Just give me a thumbs up. You've shared the stream, inshallah. Share the stream so you get the reward. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Dean, is, uh, give me a thumbs up. Jazakallah khair. What the exciting announcement is that we all know Amigos Burgers. We were talking about burgers earlier, Dr. Dean. He probably doesn't like burgers. But anyway, uh, we, uh, Amigos Burgers, those, uh, those amazing people at Amigos Burgers, uh, they have, uh, what they said is that everything we donate, they will match fund it. Alhamdulillah. So every donation, they will match that fund. Alhamdulillah. Allah, wa May Allah bless them for, you know, having taken this initiative. So everything you give, as it says on the screen, Match fund 100% by Amigos. You give £10, they're going to match it with, a, with a 10, £10. That'd be £20, inshallah. So, anyway, uh, let's go to uh, let's go to you, bro. So, bro, um, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, you've probably not been asked this before, yeah? And you're probably thinking, oh, no, why did I get this kind of host? Bro, <laughs> I want to know. Where, I want to ask some basic questions. I've always been curious. Where were you born and bred, bro? Harrow, 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 London. Yeah, so... okay. Yeah, so also, um, you actually lived there and you actually born and bred there, you've been there all your life, yeah, yeah, uh, until I moved here. <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm between the two countries, obviously, because my work is in the UK, but I'm getting more work done here. But yeah, born and bred in London, yeah, okay, I'm that's and, been there. alhamdulillah. And bro, look, uh, this, this is a really strange question to ask, but maybe you'll, you'll appreciate it. Not 
there's a lot of people on the, in, in the chat and, and who come to the show and watch this later that alhamdulillah have been blessed with a you know good household, meaning their parents have uh, given them good ethics, strong Islamic ethics. They brought them well. They kept away from sins, alhamdulillah. But a lot of us, like myself and many other brothers, we live we lived that life of jahiliya. We had we saw it right. Some went in deep, some not so deep. But then Allah guided us. We changed for whatever reason. Maybe someone gave dawah. What's your story, bro? Did you also have a change? And if if you if you did, what was the change? If you can maybe touch off that yeah, quickly. That's a good question. I I think back in the nineties, uh, there was a lot of movements in colleges and universities, as you know, Nadim. And it was just that kind yeah. of influence. And I think that the thing that really changed my life was uh, one leaflet about the proof of God. And because before that, it was all, you know, it was cultural, it was blind faith. And then yeah. somebody gave me something which says, here's conclusive proof that God exists, Allah exists, and this is why. That was okay. the thing that changed my life. So that was the one thing. The actual Brilliant. evidence, I needed that to, to wake up. Like um, how long? How long has that been, bro? Oh, a long time. You don't want to know. <laughs> so from 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 college, college 18, days, seventies, yeah. uh, college days. But I was actually from my father's, from my parenting, from my dad's parenting. I was the only kid to go to pray Jamaat in Fajr in England in the eighties when there was only me, my dad, and the Imam. So we were the only three people who would pray Fajr in the mosque in Haram Mosque when it was only a little house. So we're going back a long way in the cold going out and we would go in the cold in those days it was very cold so there was obviously a bit of the parenting as well i have to give my parents that may allah reward them so there's something there as well for sure so, as you said so yes yeah, so, yeah. And then, i think a hunger you gotta have a hunger i didn't know at the time even the youth work uh, was 13 years ago i just allah put something in my head in my mind now, what are the stats on Muslim youth? And no one knew. And even today, nobody really knows. We haven't done any peer review studies. But I've been collecting data for 10 years. But nobody knows how many Muslims are atheists, how many Muslims, you know, do certain things, drugs, or whatever it might be. We haven't, as a community, collected that data. Yeah. And when I started 13 years ago, the first thing I did was do a survey. And when I did the survey, I was shocked because I paid um, Ansar Youth Project, actually, in Wembley, I paid them, I remember 100 or 120 pounds. I said, here's some surveys. I want to know this stuff from the youth. And I wasn't even a youth worker then. And I don't know why I did it. Only Allah, it was Allah's plan. Allah. I gave it and I paid 100 pounds something. I left it two weeks. I went back and I'm really excited to get the surveys back. And I opened the envelope and they were all empty. They were all blank, oh. but I paid the money. And then it took me a while to realize that the youth wouldn't open up because you know, they were scared of, you know, expressing themselves. And then the real life changer happened as a lecturer. I was at Uxbridge College. I was delivering a lecture. And after the lecture, I put my laptop away. And I was putting my laptop in my bag. A lot of uh, the students were Asians and Muslim youth, yeah. about 17, yeah. 18 year olds. And I'd finished and I was putting my laptop away. And the youth came to me and they said, so we really like how you teach and you really inspire us. And you talk about more than just, you know, the subject matter. And I said, well, what do you guys do in your free time? And there were, there were Muslim girls, Muslim boys, and a couple of Sikh guys. And I said, what do you guys do in your free time? And they go, sir, we do everything. It's just our parents don't know. Mm. We do everything everyone else. That's and that day changed my life. And that's so when Dr. King's solution started. So it was, okay. it was seeing what I was seeing in the colleges and universities, which you couldn't see without a pass, that made me change my life. And I haven't been able to stop since. So brilliant, brilliant, bro. Uh, bro, before we there's a there's actually a question for you, which is really interesting to start a discussion on. Yeah, but before that, I want to ask, I want to invite our CEO of Islamic Network, Brother Ayub Sidat, to grace his presence onto the screen to come from behind the screens in front of the screen, inshallah. And here we are. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Just I am good, alhamdulillah. Nadim, by just for you, in, in recognition of that lovely sticker behind you, I we dug out our Eid decorations. And so I have created this elaborate studio set just wow. for you, Nadim, mashallah. There you go. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you, you've, so just like Amigos Burgers are matching our, um, uh, doing our match funding, you've matched my uh, background. Excellent, alhamdulillah. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, Ayub, you know, I, 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 we're going to come to Dr. Dean, of course, he's our guest today. But just a quick question for you, bro. Just in briefly, you know, you could have chosen any of the work, any of the field. You, mashallah, very talented. You've got a lot of skills. Alhamdulillah, the most organized guy on the planet. I call him, mashallah, Allah Mubarak. So why why youth work? Why why youth work with masjids? Was it, you know, just briefly, if you can explain your passion behind it, bro. Jazakallah khair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's really simple. If not now, then when? If not yeah. now, then when? And I take that further. You know, this is something I live by. If not now, then when? If not me, then who? Mm. If not now, oh. then when? If not me, then who? Too many of us are too busy living our lives. Everything is passing them by. But you have it within your ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to make changes in whatever field that is. And so for me, this is my way, my way of giving back. I, it's an honor and a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to to be involved in such amazing initiatives like setting up hubs in masjids, let alone setting up youth clubs and youth activities, but really bringing the focus of the masjid back on what it should be, the hub of the community. And this isn't something new, Nadim Bai and Dr. Dean. You guys know this better than I do. Yeah. This was the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He established the hub of the community. And it wasn't just for salah. Because in Islam, we can pray anywhere. The masjid to the Prophet ﷺ and to the Sahaba was where they gathered to learn things. It's where they gathered to fundraise. It's where they gathered to discuss things. People, they used it as a shelter for the Ashab al When people were sick, they took refuge there. When delegations came, they came. We are just bringing the masjid back to what its original intention was by the Prophet ﷺ. So brothers and sisters, who's going to be out there with this noble intention in mind, to bring the purpose, to bring the masjid back to what it was intended by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who's gonna, Allahu Akbar? I was gonna say, who's get us, gonna get us off the ground? But mashallah, we've had our first donation of fifty pounds by Rahat. Mashallah, mashallah. that gets mashallah. us off the, that gets us off the uh, chart. Mashallah. And if you guys want to see the leaderboard, head over to the link islamicnetwork.net forward slash show. But the, wait, there's more. That fifty pound donation uh, by Rahat will now be match funded. I'm going to update it. That will be now a hundred pounds, mashallah. Brothers and sisters, Good. we are only two hundred pounds away from the target for this show. You can do it. I can do it. It just needs few people. Ten pounds. Give ten, and amigos, may Allah bless them, will give ten pounds on your behalf as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Thanks, bro. Uh, we got Sister Isabella Swan, but uh, Sister Isabella, before I come to your question, and you know, it's a really good question you asked, like, is a specific topic. Uh, I want to also say that you can call in as well, brothers and sisters. So there is a, a live calling feature. The link should be on the comments um, where you can actually you just click on the link and you're here. You can come here and you can interact with us. You can ask us questions and, uh, you know, ask any, uh, any insights, inshallah. So don't do not do not hesitate it's a good feature to come and talk you know what we've been in lockdown for the past year we've been interacting with the laptops and the screens let's let's have let's talk to each other inshallah so if uh the producers can put the link on the comments or however they can inshallah it's there you go it's it's popped up now inshallah so uh click on the link you'll be put behind the studios and then when we're ready we'll bring you on and you can ask questions to our guests inshallah um so sister isabella the topic you know we had a few topics but we wanted to keep it Dr. Dean because he's expertise, bro. I suppose uh, before we have our call even come in, I want to ask you, uh, so is it, I, I was going to say one of the many issues that the youth are facing, and I just I just picked in a few points. One of them is stress and anxiety. But I don't know if you agree or disagree with that, bro, because, mashallah, you've said you've done research and surveys. So, yeah, what do you what do you think about that? Or And is there any other things that are affecting the youth more? Yeah, how much time do you have? I just want to time it in the way that I can cover this topic yeah you've got you yeah, got, okay. four, five, you've got five minutes but what i'll do in between yeah in between i'll, I'll bring people into that's ask fine well. how many parents do we have on live today do we have a little some idea <laughs> okay i'm gonna go through it quickly as quickly as possible but when it comes to stress and anxiety um hmm. there's something that has changed so if you remember um the east is east is east generation so my dad if he was upset he'd get the chapel and Ta ta, and it will be done. Sorted. The most man. Now, the most man. <laughs> even though he had immense love, my love, bless our parents because that's all they knew. They didn't know any other way. But then in the 90s, 
the noughties, the 2000s, everything changed in parenting. What happened was we had a new movement called the self-esteem parenting movement, positive parenting movement. Now, what happened in that, although it was well intended, we went completely the other way. Now, I'm going to give you one example from a video I just released yesterday on Surah Yusuf and Yusuf alayhi salam on my storytelling. And when we were filming that for uh, a council of mosques, there was about 12 masajid who asked me to make these videos for them. When we were filming it, I sent the video over about Yusuf alayhi salam. And in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, we all know, you know, Abdul Jub, his brothers threw him down the bottom of the well. When they threw him down the bottom of the well, they're coming back home. And it says, it's night time. And they're in trouble because they're going to lie to their dad. They've just thrown their brother in a well and they don't know what to do, right? So there's this whole scenario going on. The brothers are lying. They're going to go back to Yaqub al Islam's dad. In this whole situation, there's a lot of stress, right? There's anxiety. What is going to happen? Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And they have a fear of their dad, right? And it's clear in the Quran, Surah Yusuf, it's very clear how they feel. that They, they plan a plan. For uh, Yaqidu they have a plan that they're going to plan a plan of plans, right? So the plan is because they're scared of their dad. Today we have no fear of parents, no fear of God. We're taking it away. And in this story, I tell you what happened. When I create the slides, it was with this background, but with some images. In the slide was the story. In the story, uh, there's a part where they they take the false blood. Bizamin kabit because the Quran says the false blood, the lying blood. They take right. the blood of a false animal to say to dad that a wolf ate him, yeah? Now, when I put the picture of blood on the screen, the organizer said, take the picture of blood away from the video. It's too upsetting for children. Now you tell me, if mm. we're gonna raise children who can't see blood, how are they gonna become men? Mm. Like uh, Sultan Fatih was 12 when he was running the Ottoman Empire, 12 years old. Today, a picture of blood is too upsetting for our children to see. But the same children who can play a video game and blast everything, that's fine. The same kids who can watch a horror film, when it comes to the Quran, we get upset because there's blood in it. So this parenting has become a disaster. And I know people are not willing to say it, I'm willing to say it because I live and see it every day. Mm. I see the end results of that parenting. So although it's well intended and it's Boosting us. I'll give you an example. We're boosting our kids' self esteem all the time. That's the most unnatural thing you can do to a child. If you boost my self esteem all the time, what's going to happen to me? How do you mean, bro? Can you get, can you get like a specific right. example? How, so, so some children, please. some children, let's say a fatherless child, a father's child needs self esteem boosting, needs right. it, absolutely. Father's not around, they may have complexes, they may have in insecurities. But a regular kid who's got a loving mom and dad who has everything doesn't need their self-esteem boosted all the time. So what we're told is always praise them all the time. Now, that is not natural human behavior. Now, mm. I'll, I'll give you the evidence for that from Islam as well and from the science. But why is this important? Because what we've got, the end result of all this anxiety and stress is, and, and, and I'll give you one example. I, Bro, before you go to the example, sorry, yeah. before you go, sorry, I'm just going to just, uh, you know, just a quick announcement. So, so brothers, sister, look, uh, mashallah, we're only uh, one of the brothers donated earlier, mashallah, alhamdulillah. So that means we uh, we had a target of 300 and subhanallah, now we only have, need 200, inshallah, just 200 pounds away from our target for tonight. So donate, if you can donate yeah. now and have your donation multiplied. Uh, brothers, sisters, also, if you can share this link. Because if you've already shared it before, I did ask you to share before. The thing is, with social media, people are coming, coming and going all the time. People have not logged in before are now logging in now, right? All around the world. So if you can share this, brothers and sisters, so other people can uh, get involved in the discussion and they can also uh, donate as well. And one last thing is, we want to hear from you. Don't be shy. Uh, click on the link. Come and interact with us. Ask some questions. Give some insights. Maybe some of you uh, disagree with Dr. Dean. This is not a, obviously not a debate show. But maybe you you can challenge him, and maybe he can assure you because you know uh, when it, when it comes to youth, and I, you you mentioned the word parents, that does trigger people because parents. I'm a parent, bro. I don't like to hear things sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, so you're are you trying to are you questioning me the way I you know? So so people might get triggered. So if you disagree, please yep. come on politely and disagree. And maybe Doctor D can really ram the point home because mashallah, he's been 
in this field for a long time. He's I know he's very passionate. He's been fighting you know battles and in, in various fronts. So he can maybe give you the stats and the and the and the reference, inshallah. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, very easy. The stream yard link, click on it, come and talk to us, inshallah. Uh, yeah, doctor, you're about to give an example, bro. Let me give an example. So Dr. Brenda Brown at University of Houston, she's a research professor. Uh, she has a really great TED talk on this. But just listen to this really carefully. We want to get rid of stress and anxiety in kids. Okay. She had done years of research on children, well-being, how to make children happy and successful. And the conclusion of years of research, interviews with parents, interviews with children, surveys, focus groups, she discovered the one key factor to succeed in life was not what she was expecting. It was vulnerability. Right. To succeed, you have to be vulnerable. When okay. we do everything for our children, we remove vulnerability. So there's no stresses, no worries from our side because we're helicopter parenting. So we're doing every, we're looking over them. We're doing the homework for them. You know, some kids I see, they can first yeah. prize for best writer and dad's wrote, wrote the article, but the kid gets best writer of the year. So things like that. But what my point is this, vulnerability is, and she says it, that it's part of our fitra. To actually build resilience is part of our fitra. She says that we are wired for struggle. We are wired, and no. that's, we know that. Now I'm going to take okay. that back to the Quran because I'm going to take you to an amazing story. Let's go back 7,000 years. Okay, let's go to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam, when he, you know, the, the mother has this vision to protect her baby because, you know, the Pharaoh's army is going to kill all the babies. The mother has a vision from Allah to do something about this. So she's, she has this sense to put the baby in the river Nile. When she does that, she's distraught. She's absolutely, oh. it says in the Quran, she's about to scream out to tell the world what's going on. Where's my baby? Oh. I've just taken a big risk. I've put my baby in the river. What am I going to do? And she, she's about to break down. Imagine the level of stress she has. Yeah, and in yeah. the home is Musa Islam's sister, Moses' sister. Now hmm. think about this. Moses is in the house. What stress will she be under? I mean, mom is upset. Brother is gone in. You know, are, there, are there crocodiles, alligators? What is in the... Where is that baby going to end up? Yeah. Nobody knows. That, that's what you call stress. That's what you call vulnerability, right? Oh. But let's see what the Quran is teaching us. How do you solve that kind of level of stress? You can't have a higher stress than leaving your baby in the river. And the mom says, She says to Musa's sister, Go, follow the army. Now, this is a girl. She's not told any explanation, no hugs, no mommy hugs, no sadke jong, you know, baby, my dear, are you okay? Are you comfortable? No, no, go. Just one word, follow. That's yeah. it, one word, follow. Nothing else. Mm. And she's so emotionally intelligent, so brave, she goes out in the land of the Pharaoh's army where everyone's on lockdown because there's orders to kill all the babies. In that situation, this girl is going alone and she's following. Pussy comes from Kissa, which means in parts, bit by bit. Follow them step by step. Stop if you have to. Follow the army wherever they're going. And then she intelligently speaks to the army and convinces them that I know a lady who can look after that baby who doesn't stop crying. Because Musa yeah. Islam wouldn't stop crying in the palace. No one, nobody could keep him quiet. And that was Allah's plan. But she manages to negotiate with them and bring the real mother into the palace with, with Asiya alayhi Now, the point oh. here is, how do you raise children like that? You have to create that level of trust and independence in young people and give them the opportunity to be vulnerable. I always say this, and I, I don't know if you, you will understand or see it from my point of view. Mm. I believe that it, when we, we get closer to Allah, the more we're tested, right? The more Allah... Yes, gives sure. us opportunity to see his wonders. Ya Allah, you did this for me. You saved me here. I lost this job because you wanted to give me a better job. Ya Allah, you always... But if you do everything for your children, they never see the wonder of Allah. They never get to see it. Because we never give them the chance. So then you have a lack of tawakkul in Allah. You have a lack of faith. 
And then I, I'm going to argue this. I'm sorry. I personally, from years of studying, reflecting all day, every day, the mental health crisis can be fixed by faith from the Quran. The solutions are there. I don't believe, because if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, they see mental health as a chemical imbalance. But the chemical, if, if I take antidepressants, or like my one of my closest friends in Pakistan, he shot himself because the antipsychotic drugs were driving him crazy. The mm. chemical imbalance cannot fix the underlying cause of the issue. If you're upset because your dad left the home, you, you know, your mom's on her own, you're upset because you got divorced, you're upset because you didn't pass your exams, the pill cannot fix that. It can yeah. give you highs and lows. It, the SSRIs can work temporarily, but it cannot fix the underlying issue. The underlying issue can be fixed by parenting, by the environment that our young people are in, and giving them the opportunities to succeed. If that makes okay, any bro, sense. Come on. Uh, before, you know, Masha, you're giving us a lot of insights, and Masha, there's some really positive comments. They agree with you, alhamdulillah. There's a question I saw earlier, uh, just to change it. But before, before I come to that question by Sister uh, Uzma Qureshi, again, I want to ask everyone here, if you're tuning in now, share this. Remember, we uh, uh, there's so many ways, so many means uh, that Allah has provided us to get reward now. So you can share this on Facebook. You can also, you know, those of you who are watching on whether even if it's Facebook or YouTube, when you press the share button, it actually gives you options and you can copy the link. So if you can copy the link, then you can share that link on Twitter. You can share it on wh whichever, you know, whichever medium, your stories on Instagram. Uh, you can share it on WhatsApp. If you're on WhatsApp group, share it. Let them come on the show. Let them inter uh, interact with our guest. And maybe, inshallah, inshallah, they can help us reach our target. Our target is just 200 pounds. That's nothing. In Ramadan, people are looking to give. Everybody is looking to give uh, donations. All of you right now, all of you watching right now, you have family, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties. They're all looking to give in Ramadan because it's the time to give. Your rewards are multiplied, subhanAllah. People are waiting maybe a month ago. No, I'll not give now. I'll just delay it. So this is their chance. So all we need to do is just show them here's an opportunity. Here's a, here's a charity organization. We're here for the youth. We are dedicated for the youth. We've got 11 year experience. We work with Dr. Dean. He knows our work, mashallah. We work with the mosque. Uh, we've got GameSpot has been running for the last, I think, uh, six, seven months. Uh, teenagers and young people are coming and they are benefiting and we're seeing change already. But uh, before we come to the question, I guess are you wants to say something. Are you welcome back, bro? Assalamu alaikum. Just wanted to let you guys know that Dan has donated 20 pounds and he says, may Allah give strength, success and Iman to our young people, or to our youth, I mean. So mashallah, Dan's 20 pound donation, Allahu Akbar is now match funded by Amigos to 40 pounds, Alhamdulillah. So I'm gonna update the leaderboard now, but we're getting there brothers and sisters, we're getting there. Before the end of this hour, inshallah, we can do it. We can meet our can, target. Can I are you, can I donate 50 pounds, please? Allahu Akbar. Allah. 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 But I was going to say, Dan is the man, but also Dr. Dean is the man as well. MashaAllah. <laughs> so, bro, we've got a question then, inshallah. Um, and we've got other comments coming as well, alhamdulillah. So the question was about from Dr. Uh, sorry, it was from Sister Uzma Qureshi. If I can have that popped up again, please. I think it's about how to instill character in... Yeah, young that one, bro. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so anyway, yeah, just really yeah. briefly on that, how, what, what, yeah, yeah, so on that, inshallah. In terms of character itself, you know, we we know that this is why Islamic networks are important because what you guys are doing, you're giving them a place to build character and have role yeah. models and have people to mentor them. And that's what we need. So I'm just going to say my bit, and you haven't told me to say this, but Islamic Network is the only organisation in the UK that yeah. is doing this work. That is at the solution is the masjid. We all know that. And they're the only organization trying to open the doors to the masajid. Now, all the people running Islamic Network, I know four of the main people, they all could have had great careers and they gave all of that up for your children, for your youth. If we don't support these people, I believe we'll be accountable for this. If we have to support this organization, there's nothing like it. The passion these brothers have and the sisters and their team to really transform people's lives. This is a sadqa jariya that doesn't stop. When you bring one youth to the deen, everything they do, you get the reward for. When you feed someone a bag of rice, you get the reward. Continue doing that. But once the rice is finished, your reward finishes. What you donate today will continue the whole life of that young person. 
So support those events that they do where they have a session, a per monthly sponsorship, or it's a direct debit. Go on their website if you can share the link and set up a direct debit. That's, that's the best way you can regularly support them so they can keep doing the essential work that they're doing. I vouch for them personally because I know all of them and I know what they're doing and how sincere they are. There's nothing other than passion in this team. And they really, really care about our kids. So please, 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 just, you're going to get it back because this isn't your money. Allah gave it to you just yeah. to test you and to give it back to you in, in the Akhirah and in this world, you get it back. But it's just something Allah gave you to hold on to, to donate. So the sadaqah is not yours anyway. So please just give it and Allah will return it to you. He's promised that in this life and the next time, life. 70 times and even more than that, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. So uh, please, let's do this. Amma, Sister Amatullah is asking, is saying that, did you hear about the 90-year-old boy in America who killed himself and the family? He left a note and you can just tell he was mentally uh, unstable. So obviously this is saying like, you know, really sad story. And why do you think it got that far? So that, that note was like a cry for help for people to understand him. Yeah. So what's your, I mean, you must have. Yeah, so you, so you one know. of the things the young, the, the, that young man said was that I wasn't attaining happiness. Right. And then. If I'm if I'm sad, I don't attain happiness, and then I I I leave this world, I, I I commit suicide. Then what happens is my family will be upset, so I might as well get rid of them as well. Then nobody will be sad anymore. Now here, this is part of the misunderstanding, and I have to say this: in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu never mentions the pursuit of happiness. There's no pursuit in our life. We're not. We don't do anything for happiness. Actually, there's no pursuit. If happiness comes, it's great, alhamdulillah. But happiness is always short-lived. And when we can understand, and this is, uh, Nadim, not a problem affecting just this young man. May Allah have mercy on all these people. Maybe it's a misunderstanding. Amen. Amen. Leave it between them and Allah. But what we have to do is understand that the purpose of life is not happiness. This is something we're taught in other cultures, and we've adopted it. So we're, or even the, the marriage crisis is because I can't find the perfect person that I'll be happy with. You know, I can't do this for happiness. Happiness is something that won't last forever. It lasts mm. as long as you have the ice cream or that Amigos burger. The minute the burger finishes, the happiness is gone. So it's yeah. always going to be short-lived and the treadmill will keep running and we would get, get off it and look from the outside and say, you know, I don't want to be on this treadmill chasing happiness. I can be happy with what? With my connection with my creator because that is the best happiness contentment you can get. So it's wow. about understanding and support for, for those families. But I don't want to give mental health permanence. This is I keep saying this. What we're doing to mental health is saying, it's all right, Dave, you can be depressed. We love you. Pat on the back. You can be depressed the rest of your life. No, no, no. We want to get people out of depression. We don't want to yeah. celebrate depression, give it permanence the way we're doing nowadays. We're saying, oh, it's all right to have anxiety for the rest of your life. No, we want to get you out of that anxiety. Mm -hmm. And there is a way to do that. If you, so that, that's the difference I'm in the market. Brilliant, bro. Uh, so before I come to the next question, again, brothers and sisters, uh, I, we would like to talk to you. Uh, there is a option now where you can call it live. It's very simple. You there's a, there's a link here, a StreamYard link. You click on it. You'll be put behind the studio, and that's it. Then the producers will do the rest. They'll bring you on. So please don't be shy. Come and interact with us. Come and talk to us. Come and uh, ask questions with, with our guests. Uh, give us your insights. Maybe you want to make a uh, huge donation as well, inshallah. Uh, so you would like to do it verbally. So brothers and sisters, uh, do come on uh, and we'll take your question as well, inshallah. Uh, and we have, a, mashallah, the lovely face of you back on again. Welcome back, bro. you got another update for us, I suppose. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, I do. I Hello. can say, I, I'm going to say this. Are you ready? I hope you, if you're ready. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We have now raised three hundred and forty-two pounds fifteen. Mashallah. May Allah bless uh, uh, Sister Fozia who donated fifty pounds. Alhamdulillah, and everything is being match funded by Amigos. Uh, so now we've raised three hundred and forty-two pounds fifteen. We have hit our target for this show. For brothers and sisters, there's still time, so why not? Let's keep going. Let's yeah. Can we raise the target, please? Can we, can we raise the target? To Let's five raise hundred? the target, Ooh. inshallah. Brothers and sisters who are watching, we're going to raise the target. Remember, everything you give will be one hundred percent match funded. This is happening live. Can we live on show? We raise, we're changing the target right live now. on show. Whoa. 
عوني هذا بارك الله الله جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله عليك السلام جزاك خير برو and جزاك خير sister Fozia and all others who donated may Allah accept it from you may Allah accept your fast and you know this donation could be the one that I always say this you know whatever donation we give much Dr Dean gave a donation as well we we are so busy in our lives we give donations we do sadaqa we do dawa we do advice talk storytelling all the stuff that we do we don't know which one's going to get accept, accepted that's the biggest thing will it get accepted and we got more chance of ramadan because you know we are more cleaner more pure you know purified so you guys donating that that could go to a actual practical solution because you know a lot of people talk about youth issues bro they're like oh the youth they you know in urdu oh, mare bacche kharab ho gaye you know the youth are gone and this problem and that problem and pornography and gang the thing is a lot of people just talk like you know every fairy solutions you know like yeah we should yeah. do this we should do that yeah very general very very uh, i don't know no, nothing deep or in depth or profound yeah, yeah. the thing about islamic network as you pointed earlier I've seen their work. I mean, I wasn't really convinced of mosques. People know that. I was always neck. I've had a really bad experience of masjids. But the way the brothers have set it up, mashallah, the way the brothers have prepared and pitched it to the masjids and 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 talked about it, mashallah. I we've seen youth come to these game spots that we have. We've seen sisters come to these um, brunches, big brunch, and there were other activities. Only because of COVID, we've been restricted. Otherwise, we've got such a million of ideas, subhanAllah. So we got an amazing, talented team, mashallah, headed by Sister Fozia. And of course, Brother Hamza, who's, uh, I, I, he wasn't feeling well. Hopefully, he's, hopefully he's better. Amazing work. Very talented work. Bro, it's actually working. We've got youth coming in with all sorts of backgrounds, subhanAllah. They're coming in. You're getting a youth in the masjid in this day and age, in London, UK, 2021, and to come and listen to a bunch of Molvies, that is a huge victory because they don't want to know. They don't know, right? They just run away. So uh, it's actually working, brothers and sisters. So we need to create more hubs. We've got four or five now. We need more. We need at least 20 this year and wow. maybe more. Baba, you'll help, inshallah. So do donate. Anyway, before I come to that question in the comment, we have Sister Dure Nayab. Assalamu alaikum, sister. How are you? Wa alaikum as Alhamdulillah. How are you? Hamda, welcome to the show. Where are you from? Which city? I'm from Karachi, Pakistan. Ah, oh, Karachi, the city lights where uh, Dr. Dean's admin is uh, there as well. Maybe yeah. to wake him up. But anyway, <laughs> uh, sister, do you have a comment or insight you want to share? Um, I have a question and insight as well. Uh, like uh, we have seen that blocking Islamic practices in Muslims is not new. People, um, the non-Muslims used to uh, mock Muslims in the earlier era of Islam as well, but. Uh, what we have seen in the past decade that um, the youth is taking it, uh, they are being apologetic Muslims. Whenever someone uh, from, North, from the Western countries is uh, mocking Islam or any practice or um, any uh, person's action, they feel apologetic about them and they don't want to associate them, themselves with something, uh, that kind of practice that is being mocked. So what are the possible reasons for that and uh, what are the uh, solutions that we have to take in order to make them realize that uh, about the glo glory of Islam and how it is uh, the Islamic practice practices are still relevant in this era, in this age as well. Okay, interesting question. In fact, it was so good that uh, Dr. Dean stormed off and left. <laughs> well, it wasn't that. It wasn't that bad of a question, bro. But anyway. No, it's a great question. <laughs> uh, so Jazaka, so yeah, bro, over to you. Yeah, I, the thing is, this I, I always say one thing about confidence in faith. You know, the thing yeah. is, when we become our young people become defensive, or they have a lot of confusion. If you go on TikTok, the youth and the mentality of the youth you really see on TikTok because they have no fear on TikTok. They're very open. So you get all kinds of Muslims and pseudo-Muslims and all kinds of things. Now, the, the key issue here is confidence in what we believe in. And how do we bring that, that confidence that not only am I not, sister, going to be defensive, but let me give you something beautiful in, to the world. Let me yeah. offer Islam instead of capitalism. Let me offer Islam instead of of all the other so-called solutions, you know? Mm. And when that confidence will come with, you know what I said in the beginning, the proof of God leaflet, that's what brought me here in the first place. Somebody gave it to me. May I reward that person. But 
it comes with confidence, whether that's also intellectual, rational, spiritual, emotional, all of that package, the, the environment that you, you, you have those role models in. When you get the confidence, then you see, and there are, you know, Nadim, you're asking me about good role models. There's some amazing young people on TikTok who are really confident Muslims. And they're not apologetic, they're not rude, they're well-mannered, they speak to gay people, they speak to non-Muslims, they speak to everyone, but they're doing such a beautiful, intelligent way, yet they're very confident in who they are. And I don't, it's not, you know, it's not like uh, one of the scholars said that you go and burn a KFC uh, and, you know, because it's Garford fried chicken, you know, <laughs> you don't go and burn a KFC. That's not what we're meant to be doing. We, <laughs> our job, it's not to burn cars and be our shikara suit. Our job yeah, to yeah. love Muslim is to show it through the great words. You see, the Prophet Muslim's words were always true and concise, precise and exact to the requirements of who he's talking to. And Absolutely. when we're talking international media, we're dealing with media, we need to know how to engage with them. I think we need training on that. There are organizations that do that. And I think Nadim's really good at that. And so definitely it's about building confidence and let's take it the other way. Let's let's offer the world something rather than being always on the defensive. No, no, we didn't do that. It was not yeah. us. We don't believe in that. Well, wait, wait, let me show you something really amazing. Let me show you what Islam says about the environment. The Prophet said that oh, okay. God, even a running, running river don't waste water in it. Today yeah. our seas are polluted. Let me show you something Muhammad said. Why is Muhammad the greatest man ever? Our youth don't even know, our adults don't even know. They just say, we love the Prophet Ask them why, they don't know why. They don't know why, they just emotionally love the Prophet that's fine. But they cannot put it down of why Muhammad yeah. I had a conference with 1500 Indian Muslim youth. And I asked mm. them, why is Muhammad Sallallahu the best man ever? None of them could answer the question. And oh. most of them have gifts of Quran and they're all educated. MIT equivalent, Bangalore, IT people. And the, and the reasons they gave me, I said, you could have said that about Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Buddha, anybody. I want to know why Muhammad is awesome. the best of creation, the best ever. And if you don't know that as a parent, you can't tell your kids. You need to know that and then tell your kids why he's the best. So when they say Muhammad, they smile. And when they smile, they're going to be confident. Bro, we'll go come to the next question uh, by Femi uh, Jarvis. Uh, I've got a quick question for you. Um, one of the things that really helps, you know, people are watching, give them confidence, donations, and I'll come to you, Ayub, in a second. Is I can see your smile. I see your way, bro. Uh, I'm not ignoring it. Uh, so just really quickly, in fact, let, let Ayub say a thing, then I'll have my question, then we'll give him that question. Yes, Ayub Saab. Assalamu alaikum. I'm back with some good news, alhamdulillah. Just Inshallah. dotting the I's and crossing the T's and pressing submit. But we have crossed over the £400 mark. Alhamdulillah. Takbir. Allah, Allah Akbar. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. I want to send, send a very special shout out to one of our viewers, uh, Sister Uzma Qureshi, who not Mashallah. only has she donated £20, MashaAllah, but she set that up to donate £20 every single month this is a real sadaka jaria her donation will go on to help people month after month after month after month after month brothers and sisters uzma is your example today because she is fulfilling the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the best of deeds the very best of deeds are those that are done regularly even if they are small 20 pounds a month is 66 p a day not even a can of any kind of drink not not anything but uzma for that investment of yours every single day may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from you increase you and may you get the reward of all those that follow set up a donation 10 pounds a month whatever you want whatever is doable and know that in this blessed month of the quran the prophet وسلم, said that it is the best of deeds we're looking for the best of deeds the best are those that are done regularly even if they are small we are less than 97 pounds away from our new target brothers and sisters jazakallah khair i will see you before the end of the show inshallah salam alaikum brilliant, brilliant bro can you, okay, can you so, share the donate link please because people are asking me so can i have the link please um uh, and which link do you want, bro the donate to your website 
Okay, so if we, we're going to put it on the comments, yeah, it should be in the comments, and it's going to be up on the banner as well, inshallah. There you go. Uh, so yes, we have another caller, uh, Saria. Salam alaikum, Saria. How? Salam alaikum. Interesting Hi. name, Saria. How are you? Uh, Dr. Dean, I actually know this brother. This is a long time friend. I'm just Not laughing because he comes with different names. Mashallah, Allah bless him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in fact, you're not far from each other, bro. Where are you calling from? Where are you in the world at the moment? I'm in Alain. No, not you. This brother, Saria. <laughs> yeah, Saria's my son. Yeah, Saria Saab. Where are you, bro? I'm in Qatar right now. Qatar. Uh, you're in Qatar. Okay, so down the road. Down the road. Yeah, yeah literally okay, down the road. Uh, so, bro, yeah, you were in Pakistan earlier, innit? So, Masha, you come back to you come back. He's Masha teaching out there. Yes, bro. Sorry, do you have any? Uh, do you have a question for our for our guest or uh, like an insight or something? I wrote a question uh, for you earlier through Facebook. It was about the because I meet a lot of practicing Muslims. Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm in the Dawah like yourself as well. So they're starting to uh, 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 there's a kind of gap being created between practicing parents and the children. So you know, I've started to notice that. So that's why I asked that question. I was just uh, following on from that. You know, yeah. Why? Are we starting to see this gap yeah. between the youth today and you know so-called practicing parents who are western and are young but yet we still have the same gap that our parents had with us you know very good question brother let me let me give you a few uh case studies just for you to sort of analyze I was about to ask the same question but I'm, I'm glad you brought it yeah, on, okay. exactly. the, the, I, i'm going to put it back to a facebook post i saw once a few years ago i saw a nikabi sister and she'd posted about her son, it's about six, seven years old, in a Spider-Man costume. And she was so proud of him. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, because we all love Spider-Man, yeah? Mashallah, he's, he's good at climbing, yeah? But the point here is that no one is immune to Western culture, okay? Now, what happens is, one of the you said to me once, that my dad tells me to pray, do wudu, all of the, you know, all the rituals, everything. And the words he used to describe his dad was that my dad is a book, not a human, not a dad, no emotional. Case. He's a book of rules. He's like a mm. walking book, Sayyid Bukhari. This is the evidence. You need to do this. So what we've become, either we yeah. sometimes become books or we become preachers in our own homes, dais in their own homes. And that's not we, the one thing we're not meant to be is dais in the home. We're meant to be just playing playing PlayStation with them and all that. Now, the thing here is this. What's happened is Islam itself has become ritualized. And when Islam doesn't offer solutions, and this is a massive problem when it comes to practicing families, that we assume because they did the tajweed, because they did the Quranic lessons, everything will be fine. Not like that at all. Actually, what happens is you get a false sense of security because of that. I get most of my calls from practicing families when the kids are older and have left Islam, become atheists and all the rest. Let's not go down. There's a lot to discuss there. But the, the cause here, the cause is this, that we never discuss the underlying issues. Last year, about 18 months ago, actually before lockdown, we, I did a workshop about puberty and, and Najasa and watching yourself. And about 30 young boys came to that session. And I said, put your hands up if your dad has ever spoken to you about keep washing yourself, using a lota, you know, puberty. All None of the dads, 30 out of 30, all practicing, have spoken to their grown-up sons about puberty. So what do you expect? So the problem is that Islam is ritualistic. Uh, we, I'm going to say it again, we love the Jweed, we never love Tafsir. It, yeah. The Quran has rights on us. There's the Jweed, there's Hift, and there's Tafsir. Tafsir is completely ignored. So we love the recitation, alhamdulillah, that's great. But until we reflect... We're never going to solve this problem because all the problems that we're talking about, all of the solutions are in the stories. I'll give you two stories and all your answers are there. Yusuf al-Islam story and Musa al-Islam. Surah Yusuf, yeah. Surah Qasas, all the answers are there. Wallahi, I, I'm saying this not just because it's cool to say Quran and Sunnah. No, no. Actually, no, bro, you're, 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 you're making complete sense, bro, and you're giving a lot of insight and you see the comments. But Literally, you, bro, you know, yeah. all the, the stuff you've said, mashallah, um, the insights and experiences is shown, but do you agree, bro? That until we create a hub, because you know, the youth it's yeah. like the youth are over there, where are they in their homes now because of lockdown? Uh, they yeah. before lockdown, 
they're in the streets, they're in the they're in the hoods, they're in the yeah. malls, yeah. They're not they're not in the masjid, right? The youth will, you know, yeah. who are, let's say non-practicing away from the inconvenience. Yeah. The thing is, do you agree that until we create a hub, a place yeah. where they can come and mix 100%. and mingle with yeah. other brothers, sisterhood, brotherhood, meet mentors, yeah. how important is that, bro? Because I think it's critical. That, that, that is the solution. That's what me and the youth have discussed, uh, you know, even at MCB when I when I delivered the talk. The, the masjid is the solution because yeah. you can't do everything at home. But we can't also blame the imam either for everything. Imams need training, but we can't blame the imams. It's the parents first. Home is everything. And then a place to hang out and equally for the girls as much as the boys. And there's always this issue. Islamic Network are doing things for girls as well. Most yeah. places, even if, even if a handful of organizations that do things for youth, they do it only for the boys. Islamic Network looks at boys and girls equally. And that's why you need to support them now. Really, yeah, just really to, much. Yeah. Just to touch on that, bro, the sisters, mashallah, they've been uh, absolutely smashing. We had, we've been yeah. having a game spot where the, the youth, they come in uh, various places, for example, in Dalston, in yeah. uh, in Halston, and now uh, there's a place in, in I think, uh, Yasser's, Yasser's is out there. I forget the name where it is. I know it's called Labeka Masjid, but yeah. I don't know exactly where it is in East London. And now there's been there's actually inquiries from all over UK as well. But the sisters, bro, the last few weeks and months, and mashallah, some of the sisters are here. They've been organizing big brunches, and it's been a huge success. All these sisters are getting together. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely loving it. The food, the kind of stuff. I mean, it's a lot of food. I mean, we don't have Ramadan, but the kind of food, the image is there. If you go to our website, uh, islaminetwork.net, if you go to our Instagram, you can check it out. Yeah. All the images are there. The the, the food, so you know the, what they're doing. It's amazing. It's a beautiful place, and. And, the, and as far as I know, and the sister said, there's more and more demand for it. But that's just one corner of London. We've got yeah. youth all over London. So yeah. that's why we, yeah. need, we need everyone's support. We need, and this is the 100%. time for it. It's actually yeah. critical now. It's not like, uh, you know, bro, you know what they used to say with the with yeah. youth work? And I'll say one like, this thing and we'll come to the question. You know, there's a lot of charities we know, bro. And I absolutely am not putting any charity down. You know, whether it's orphanages, whether it's helping yeah. humanitarian. Absolutely. But you know what? As critical is the youth crisis, it's actually a critical thing. It's not like, oh, it's sad, you know, it's a nice thing. Maybe, maybe you should spot that too. It's just as important. This, this is our youth. It's our ummah. It's our family. And it's gonna hit. Maybe, maybe there's youth out there now who are watching. They're not parents. You're gonna become parents someday. Do you want to really bring them up in this society? You know what's going on. There's all these statistics and craziness mm -hmm. and now uh, all this ge uh, gender confusion they're trying to push mm -hmm. and all these agendas, subhanAllah. So we need hubs. We need to create it now. Yeah. Uh, if we, Let's start help, save, saving the youth now and look for the future as well. Bro, there's been a couple of questions that uh, we missed for a long time. Anam is saying, how can we work on mental health issue along with following Quran? I think you touched upon it, but maybe you just want to... Yeah, I'd love to do a session from Surah Qasas on mental health because I think that would really help on that because I've done years of study on it. So inshallah, let's do that one day. I'm happy to do it for some network if they want. Uh, but we could do that as a solution because we don't have the time right now. But I just want to emphasize yeah. for the question that this youth crisis, Nadim, what you said, this isn't about us losing the youth. We're not going to lose them. We've already lost them. We need to recover well, yeah. most of the youth now. Yeah. We're not losing yeah. them, we've already lost them. If you go True. out in the big wide world, 95% of youth at least minimum are away from Islam. The 5% from the practicing families in the ISOC, Islamic societies you see in uni, even they're struggling. So unless there's people like Islamic Network, there's nothing there, there's nothing. And this reward for you is so immense. My father would say, there's nothing higher than this in reward, than this work then to nurture young people. Wow. The Prophet ﷺ nurtured young people to the extent that they led they led ahead of Abu Bakr and Umar. So imagine, um, you know, so that's so, the... But, but, sorry, but, uh, there's, there's a comment I want to clarify. Sister Rush is saying, women are not only around for food, brother. Please don't promote such a message. I'm absolutely not saying that. Look, I want to just clarify. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I just want to... There's one of the sisters here, mashallah, when we had a gathering Islamic Network just a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, they were saying how the, the how much sports we have. We have a sister Khadija who's our, mashallah, she has a, a, a really big, important admin role. She's actually an amazing basketball player, and we, we actually want to organize that. There's another sister that's, that was talking about swimming and other sports and cricket, playing cricket and football. It was actually Nikabi's sister. And I also say, you know, my own daughter, she's 14. 
I encourage the skateboarding. She's actually getting better and better. And she felt she's beating me. And I actually bought a skateboard. So just want to say that we're not those kind of people. We're not misogynistic men. We absolutely love our daughters and sisters. And we will promote as much as uh, uh, Islam allows. So it's absolutely more than cooking. And, you know, I'm 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 always encouraging sisters. Islamic Network is always encouraging sisters. So please uh, just want to clarify that, inshallah. Yes, Ayub, you've got uh, another As smile. Assalamu alaikum. Well, we have, we've just hit the one hour mark, which means it's time to wrap up. So brothers yeah. and sisters, if you want the reward of this blessed gathering, if you want the reward of every single young person who comes into their local masjid, a place where they can feel welcome, a place where they can be themselves, a place where they can authentically express their Islam, where they can ask questions without fear of repercussion, where they won't get thrown out of the masjid by Nadim. Very special video. This is a spoiler alert. There's a very special oh. video of Nadim <laughs> throwing a young man out of the masjid. Watch out on Facebook. It's coming yeah. soon. But brothers and sisters, if you want that reward, just £77 for us to hit our target. I know there's someone there who can just give the entire amount and we will hit the target of £500 for this show, inshallah. Be that person. And yes, oh, back to you guys, mashallah, for your wrapping up. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Excellent. Jazakallah khair, bro. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll we'll uh, have a final remarks from uh, Dr. Dean and we'll end it there until our next show, inshallah. This, this show is going to be uh, on Sundays and Takbir. Wednesdays. Allahu Akbar. Noreen Mazak, watching on YouTube, she says, I will, inshallah. Please share the link there and I will donate. Wow. Alhamdulillah. Allah that's amazing. You put a call out to the Ummah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us planned to be here. Allah guided that we will be watching at this moment, at this time. So Noreen, may Allah bless you. There is a difference between having wealth and spending it for the sake of Allah. That when an opportunity is presented to you, when someone comes to you and you have it, this amount won't hurt me. But an opportunity comes and you pass it off, that's where perhaps you'll be accountable for it. But if Allah puts an opportunity in front of you and He's given you the wealth to fulfill that opportunity and you give for the sake of Allah, that reward is, uh, is, is countless. May Allah accept it from you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah bro. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. So, bro, uh, before we end, just uh, I just want to ask: Do you have a um, like a, any story of change that you've seen or come across recently? Because you know you've been engaged yeah. with a lot of youth. You yeah, may yeah. have seen a, t a teenager transform. So maybe give one case study to show that yeah. we're not. This is not some theory. It's not a PhD yeah. theory. It's not a thesis yeah, yeah. that you've submitted. Yeah. It's a yeah. working model, inshallah. Yeah. And then we're in there. So, where I've seen, I, I saw one young man who went from and th this is really important because when we're talking about youth we're not talking about just hoodies and drug dealers and knife crime we're talking about yeah. regular kids like the brother said on the call they're just regular kids who are in practicing families you know but what happened i had a kid uh, a young man who was doing a levels and he actually decided to leave islam he said this isn't for me I don't like it, don't believe in it. His mom was crying because she said, he doesn't read Quran every day. I said, he doesn't believe in God anymore. How is he gonna read Quran every day? Anyway, wow. a few sessions, meeting him in coffee shops, having chats, just building a bond and a friendship. Forget all the judgment, forget all the preaching, just coffee, tea, yeah. having a chat, being a friend and opening up and having that trust and genuine care for him. About four months later, he says, you know, I've had a look, I've reflected, I believe in Allah. Subhanallah. And Subhanallah. and not Lord. only that, then two years later, he messaged me from university. And he said, I'm very active here. We're doing the charity work, the ISOC stuff. And Allah. from leaving Allah to bringing others to Allah, you know, it's it can happen. You know, Allah can do that. But we yeah, have to good. help the organizations that are doing it. So let me say, don't wrap up. Um, if you want to call, can I can I give a shout out on my own thing? So uh, I'm on. Yeah, I was going to ask you. I was about to ask you. Yeah, yeah but yeah, go ahead. Please. If you want to see me, I'm on TikTok every day. So at Doctor Dean One. So D O C T O R D W E N. Doctor Dean One. You'll find me on any social media with Doctor Dean anyway. But TikTok's where I'm active every day. Uh, the producer, uh, sorry, but if you could put that up on the yeah, on the comment, how do I type it? I can't do it on here. Yeah, it's on there. Me... It's, they're, 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 they're for you, bro. I think you've done it already. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. so if you want to talk to me after this, I'm available. I'm always available, inshallah. 
Never uh, seen. Y- y- Yasser said, "Don't wrap it up." Well, bro, you should call in and then give the reason <laughs> not to wrap it up. Maybe for next next show, inshallah. Look, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, Jazan well ahead for attending. Uh, Dr. Dean, Kamran Saab, thank you very much, Mashal bro. I know you're always hardworking. You're working hard for your obviously you know, your job way. and making time for this. So may Allah t- uh, bless this you. This is the it. job, bro. The work is nothing. That's just food. This is yeah. life. This is what this we need real. to do. This, this, as per the, the Quran, right? This absolutely uh, to that which gives you life. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just out everyone. So yeah. uh, may Allah reward everyone coming on. Until the yeah. next show, this is going to be on Sundays and Wednesdays. The next show is next Wednesday. There's no show this uh, this coming Sunday. So next Wednesday, uh, we're going to have various guests, inshallah, very exciting guests. Uh, look out for our show posters on our channels, inshallah. Uh, we, we're, we're very active on Instagram, uh, active on YouTube, and obviously Facebook, Islam Network. So if you haven't shared or subscribed or follow, do it now so you can see the notifications and come attend the next show and bring people with you so that can we discuss this, inshallah, new topic with different guests. So yeah, Jazakal hair, bro. Uh, Subhanakallah. Thank you. Ashhadu ilaha anta wa astaghfiruka wa alayk from me. And uh, I guess you wants to say some last things, inshallah. No, I just wanted to be here to say Jazakal hair to everyone. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday or Wednesday. Next Wednesday, inshallah. Next Wednesday, alhamdulillah. Oh, look, Dr. Dean, he's uh, he's joined us from the uh, virtual world as well. There he is. I'm on the phone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alhamdulillah. No, jazakallah khair to all Thank of you, you that have donated. Please follow uh, please follow us on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, uh, at Islamic Network. Uh, and I'll put the link for you now. Instagram. And may Allah bless all of you that have donated. Nadim, I've just seen a donation come in that you're going to find very happy. Alhamdulillah. Islamic dot net. So just to, just to sum up, let's see what the final updated amount is. In these last few seconds, Allahu Akbar. Another one, mashallah. We have just had another donation come in in the last second, which puts us over the 500 pound mark uh, wow. Allah Akbar. Mm-hmm. May Allah Brilliant. subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Mela all. Accepted. See you next week. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.